Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to fuse AI with an avocado in Adobe Illustrator. Now this is a logo that I designed a little while ago. And whilst you might not want to recreate my logo, um, there's a lot of different shapes that make up this logo and it gives me a chance to teach you a bunch of different techniques that are going to come in handy when you come to create your own logo design. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We're going to jump right to the screen now and I'm going to show you how we created this logo. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator. As always, new artboard, 1920 by 1080 pixels in size. And first of all, just go up to view and turn off snap to pixel. Snap to pixel and point are both on by default. We don't want to snap to both, so we're just going to keep snap to point turned on. Boom, let's turn that off. And here's an example in the top right corner of the Avocado AI logo that we're going to be creating. We've kind of got the shape of an avocado with the eye or like the iris of an AI computer. So I quite like this one. Um, but with a lot of logos in Illustrator, it's a case of really looking at something that has some more complex shapes and dissecting it into a more, a more simplified version. So we can see here that we've got a lot of different circles. We've got some circles in the middle. We've got a big circle around the bottom. We've got this curve at the top, which could be a circle as well. Um, essentially, we've, we've got a lot of different components that are all based on a circle. So let's go ahead and start creating this. So we'll grab the ellipse tool over here. If you don't see it, just left click and hold where the rectangle tool normally is. Ellipse tool, left click and hold shift. Holding shift will create a circle. If you don't hold shift, it will do this. Okie dokie. Right, so let's set the fill to none. And we'll change the stroke color. So from the property inspector on the right, we'll click on stroke. And we'll just give this a color. It doesn't matter what for now. Just double click any swatch, check global, click OK. And if you are on an older version of Illustrator and you don't see any of these panels or you don't know where your swatches are, don't worry, just go up to window, down to swatches, and there they are. And you can see I've got mine docked up here as well, just so they're there. I like to have them there. It's really, really handy. Okay, so we have a giant circle. I could probably scale that down a little bit, actually. Okie dokie. So what we're going to do next is go to Edit, Copy, Edit, and Paste in Place. Now, if we hold Shift and scale down from the corner, you can see it scales down proportionally. However, if we hold down Alt or Option as well, it will scale proportionally towards the center. So I'm holding down Shift and Alt or Option at the same time. And we can do this one. And again, we're just going to go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place. We'll scale that down again. And we're going to do the same thing again. Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place. Scale it down. Go really small. Okay, there we go. So we've created uh, a few of the shapes. What we're going to do now is if we click and drag on this larger circle, we're going to hold shift, it will drag it straight up, but we don't want to move the existing circle. So again, if we hold down alt or option on the keyboard and shift, what this will do is it will create a copy. So you can see as soon as I press alt or option, a second arrow appears near my cursor. And when I let go, it actually moves and copies that shape. So that's a much quicker way than going up to edit, copy, edit, paste in place if you want to like duplicate a shape uh, throughout a document. Okay, so we are going to hold shift, alt or option and scale that down towards the center. We're going to do it towards the center so that everything stays in line. So something like this perhaps. And now what we're going to do is grab the pen tool and you can use the pen tool to draw custom shapes. We're going to do something really simple here. We're just going to hover around here somewhere and you can see those smart guides. Make sure that everything lines up along the path. If you've not got your smart guides turned on, I highly recommend them. Go up to view down to smart guides. Okay. And I might just zoom in a bit as well here, just so I get this right. So you don't want it to be kind of too far back here that it's going to cut through your shape and you don't want it too far down here because then it's not going to like flow smoothly. So this takes a bit of practice. We're going to just hover somewhere around here, click and click. 
and it wants to continue that shape, what you can do is just press escape on the keyboard. And there you go. So we've got a nice, continuously smooth curve between those two circles. So that straight line just blends into the top and the bottom. And we could do the same on the other side, or what we can do, we can do it the quick way. Remember, hold shift, alt or option, drag, and we've got a copy. And then we can just flip that round by going to object, transform, reflect. Make sure it's reflecting along the vertical axes. Click OK. And there we go. We can just zoom in nice and close and move that in place. If it doesn't snap, that's fine. Move it in place. And if you want to make sure that the path is exactly lined up perfectly, zoom in super close and press Command or Control Y on the keyboard. And you can see it doesn't line up there. So what this shortcut does is it will take you into outline mode. So it will strip out any styling and essentially give you a wireframe view of your design. And I definitely recommend this because if we go back over here, oh, look at that. Oh, I got that bang on. Good work, Dan, well done. But usually that might be slightly off. So you can just zoom in a few thousand percent and just line it up. Oh, look at that. Okay, I sound surprised, don't I? <laughs> Not bad. But if it's slightly off, you can just grab the direct selection tool and then just click on these points, move them around and move them in line. So they're perfect. If they're perfect, when you zoom in like thousands of percent, when you zoom back out, like you and anyone else won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, so you can see the shape coming together now. We can press Command or Control Y, brings us out of outline mode. And let's drag over everything and we'll just thicken up the stroke actually. We'll thicken that up there. And again, if you don't have this panel because you're on an older version of Illustrator, window down to stroke, and then you've got that panel that will pop up there. Okie dokie. So you can see here that these lines we created are sticking out. Don't worry about that at the moment. We're gonna join all this up in a little bit. So we've got to figure out how to create the next piece. So if I drag over this shape here, the main body, we've got the two lines and then the two kind of main circles. What I'm going to do is go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and then hold down the left arrow key. This moves this out. And then what we can do is swap that fill and stroke. And we can see it looks like this. So if we drag over everything and then grab the shape builder tool from the toolbar on the left, hopefully, yep, we can just drag and it merges all of this together. The shape builder tool, if you've never used it before, is amazing. You can literally just drag through segments and it will combine multiple shapes into a single shape. And now we can just swap that fill and stroke, we'll put it back to this. In fact, if we want to copy the same uh, thicker red line, we can just grab the eyedropper tool and sample that line there. So now what I can do is actually select all of these elements that I deleted and hit delete or backspace on the keyboard. Sorry, elements that I copied and then hit delete or backspace. And now I'm gonna hold shift and use the right arrow key. So the reason that I use this kind of little shift technique is because I can then shift something out with the arrow keys, and make a bunch of changes, or in this case, kind of combine the shapes together and then I can hold shift and use the arrow keys and I know it's gonna nudge it back in exactly the same position. If I did it manually by dragging, you know, you're manually positioning it back. Yes, I've got smart guides, so it lines it up for me. But if you're doing a slightly different logo and the smart guides don't line up for whatever reason, it's just much easier to use the keyboard, shift it out, make the changes, shift it back. You know it's gonna be in exactly the same place. Okay, what have we got next? So, well, we've got this one here. First of all, we can swap the fill and the stroke. Boom, that's done. Next, we've got this one in the middle. We can swap the fill and the stroke. Double click on the color picker and we'll make that white. So that was pretty easy, just more circles. The outside line is thicker. So we'll, we'll thicken that up. Let's go for like 24. I think this line is probably thicker as well. So we'll maybe go for 12 looking pretty good. So we've got this kind of little highlight here in the eye. Now the way that I'm going to create this is I'm going to select this circle I've already created. I don't need to create a new one. Just hold Alt or Option and drag. 
and we'll drag that out over there. And then what I'm going to do is grab the direct selection tool and just drag over these two anchor points. So this one on the left and this one on the bottom. Hit delete or backspace and it will leave me with a quarter segment. Now I want to round off the cap at either end of this line. So if I just select this, go to stroke, you can see I can change the cap type. Okay, that was pretty easy. And I'll bring this in position here and double click on the color for the stroke, set this to white. So if I just zoom in up here, we've got this piece and we've got a little dot on its own. And this is the same width here as this outer one. So we'll go with 12. Ooh, let's zoom out. Oh, we're already set to 12. Fantastic. We can't see it though because it is behind something else. So if you can't see anything, just go to Object, Arrange, and I'm going to bring this to the front. And I'll scale this down holding Shift. Scale it down holding Shift again. And in the original design, I think this gap here, this white was the same as this. So I'm going to actually bump this up a little bit. We'll go for 14. So I'm just going to mimic this here. Nice little bit of consistency there. And it's just a case of scaling this up just so that the, the width around here is as consistent as possible. Now, this line is far too long. I want to cut this a bit short and I want to create that dot as well. So we're going to use the scissor tool. So it's underneath the eraser tool, left click and hold, and you'll see the scissor tool. What we can do is just click here, click here. And what it does is literally cut that point. So now I can grab the direct selection tool and I can click on this end point here. And when I hit delete or backspace, there we go, a couple of times, it will stop at that point where I cut it. So the same again here, I just click on this end point with the direct selection tool, delete or backspace on the keyboard a couple of times, and it won't cut any further than where I made those cuts on the line with the scissor tool. So really useful. Now, how do we get the dot? Well, this is a little bit of a trick. So we can use the pen tool for this, or the line tool, left click, just hold shift to draw a straight line. And it wants to continue that again, escape on the keyboard. And if we eyedrop a tool, this line, of course we can't see anything, so let's just move it on top of the red so we can see it. So we've got the rounded cap at either end, but if you grab the direct selection tool and you drag this, anchor point, so one end on top of the other end, they line up exactly with the smart guides, it actually creates a circle. Now if you didn't have the round cap, if you just had like a, a square cap, which is the default, you wouldn't see anything because the, the line has no width, the anchor points are on top of each other, but because it has a round cap, it rounds them off, makes a circle. And we can just go and pop this over here and then you can zoom in. Make sure you position that so the kind of the curve follows through a little bit. Maybe I'll just nudge this all towards the edge a bit so we've got a bit more consistency in these widths here. Maybe bring this up. There we go. Okay, so it's slightly different. So what I can do actually, I'll select both of these objects holding shift and we'll just scale them down like so and bring them a bit more towards the center, just so it's a little bit closer to the original example, but you can play around with that until you're happy. And we're nearly done, actually. The last thing we've got to do is the same sort of treatment, but on the outside of the avocado. So that sounds so weird. <laughs> okay. So if I grab the scissor tool, now when I cut this, I think it's going to change my stroke type. At the moment, my stroke is aligned to the outside edge. So if I make a cut, there we go, doesn't matter but just something to be aware of. And if you want to align your stroke differently, then you can do that here with the align stroke. But if you kind of make a cut in a shape or it's not a complete shape, you won't be able to use these. And that's why they're ghosted out, but you can align the stroke to the inside of the path, the center of the path, or the outside of the path. Okie dokie. All right, let's make another cut here. And with the direct selection tool, what we're gonna do is just drag over the segment in between the two cuts. So you can see here, these are the two cuts I made with the scissor tool. And we've selected the path in between those. Delete or backspace a couple times on the keyboard. And again, we need the same thing here. So we need to select the main avocado path. 
and just go to the stroke panel, round off that cap, and we need to just pop another dot in there. So well, we've already created a dot, so we can just hold Alt or Option, drag this over here. And if we use the eyedropper tool, we can just sample the same properties as that stroke. And that looks, that looks like it's in the right position. Oh, not bad. Good work, Dan. And the only thing left to do really is the color. Um, I might make the stroke a bit thicker on the outside, so I just need to drag over these elements that are all the same and just thicken this up. So you can adjust that as much as you like. And this color, let's have a look. Here is the six digit hex value if you want to copy and paste this. So with this selected, we can just go to edit and nope, let's try again. Edit, nope, won't let me do that, but you can press Command or Control C on the keyboard to copy that number if it doesn't let you for any reason. And then what we can do is we can actually go to the swatch panel and we'll make, well, we'll make a swatch out of that. And then I can just drag over everything. And well, you can see we've got question marks now, two question marks. So this isn't actually finished. We could go and change the color of this logo, but if we wanted to send this to uh, a client, for example, or someone else to use, if I just throw a color behind here, you can see we've got these white areas. Now you might want white in your design, that might be part of the design, but in this example, I want the white to be transparent. I wanna be able to see this green background instead of white. So what we need to do, let's get rid of that, is I need to actually drag over everything and go to object, expand appearance, and then object and expand. It will expand all these strokes so you won't be able to edit the thickness of the stroke anymore. But we'll be able to finalize this logo. So just object expand until you can't expand anymore. And now what we need to do is separate the red from the transparent areas, so the still white areas. So if I just throw this color in behind for now and go to object lock, lock selection. So we need to separate the red from the white essentially. So if I select all of the white areas by holding shift and clicking on them all, they are all selected now. I can go up to object, down to compound path and select make. Now these are all treated as one path even though they are separate shapes in Illustrator. So we need to do the same now for the red. So we'll just click on all the red areas, holding shift and clicking, you can see they have the red fill over here in the color picker. And again, object, compound path, make. And it puts it on top sometimes, don't worry if it disappears, just go to object, arrange, send backwards. There we go. So now essentially, rather than having lots of red shapes, we actually have one red shape made up of all these different pieces and we have one white shape. Now we've separated these into two separate shapes. We can actually select the red, hold shift and select the white. And then from the Pathfinder panel over here on the right, we can select the second option along, which is minus front or subtract. Now, if you don't see this, go to window down to Pathfinder. And there we go, it'll pop up here. So it's this one here. Click, and what it will do is it will knock that white compound path out of the red compound path. Now I can see this looks great, it's working. Uh, I've got the transparent areas exactly where I want them. Let's go to Object, Unlock All. We've finished with our, with our green background. So we'll just select that, hit Delete or Backspace. We've pretty much finished our logo. Um, I did actually create this green swatch here, but I don't need that because I created a global swatch at the beginning. And the beauty of a global swatch is because we created all of the elements of this logo in this same red global swatch. Watch this. I can check preview and it will update every instance of this color. And it might not be exactly the same as the example in the corner but that doesn't really matter. That's a pretty close match, I think. And there we go. We're uh, 
pretty much finished. So there we go. That's how to create a logo that fuses AI with an avocado. And hopefully there's a bunch of tips, tricks and techniques in there that are gonna be helpful when you're creating your logo design. So as always guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.